Hello everyone, uh, welcome to my presentation. I'm Milos Jovanovic and uh, I'm working for Levi9 as a technical team lead. And uh, for the past three years I've been working on a project which is actually a social network and uh, we are developing that for a client uh, in the Netherlands. It's a really popular website. Uh, it has around 100,000 uh, unique visits uh, per month. So it's a really high traffic website. And uh, for the last year and a half, we are developing a mobile application uh, for them. So it's a web application, but it's intended for mobile devices. So far, it's served only for mobile devices. And uh, uh, when we started uh, developing that, we investigated how can we create that. So we wanted to create a JavaScript application, single page application. And uh, we investigated a few frameworks and libraries uh, which offer you uh, some nice features in implementing uh, an SPA, single page application. And uh, uh, we picked Backbone.js because yeah, it seemed appropriate in that moment. It's, uh, uh, it's really a uh, good library with a big community and uh, uh, it's open source and uh, it's really not forcing you to do anything. So uh, in this presentation, I'll uh, try to uh, address the technology stack that we used. And uh, uh, I want to uh, get you to know the backbone modules and uh, talk a little about uh, single page applications. And then in the end, uh, show how you can assemble an SPA. Uh, I'm wondering how many of you have used uh, backbone so far? Uh, me too. And, uh, okay, not so much. So that's good because I have some, uh, one part is the introduction to Backbone.js, so uh, that's fine. And, um, okay. So Backbone, a little background. Uh, so that's a website, and uh, as I said, it's an op open source project uh, with a really big community. Uh, it's a library which uh, helps you develop uh, single page applications. Uh, it's, it is dependent on, uh, so on some DOM manipulation library. So you can use jQuery or Zepto. I don't know if you heard of Zepto. That's kind of a replacement for jQuery, a lightweight re replacement. And it's dependent on underscore. That's also a library, which is a kind of a utility library. And if you go to uh, that address, backbone.js.org, uh, uh, you, you can, of course, download the backbone.js. And uh, there's a, a lot of documentation about this library. Uh, you can see that it's really very well documented. And since, since it's uh, open source, uh, everybody is, uh, of course, invited to contribute and uh, uh, add additional documentation or, of course, uh, add additional features. And, uh, yeah, first sentence on that website states uh, it's an MVC library. So, first of all, it's not a framework because it doesn't force you to do anything. It doesn't force you to implement things uh, in any uh, particular fashion. Uh, and about MVC, well, <clears throat> I'm a uh, Java, Java programmer and I work with Spring, so uh, it's not MVC that I'm used to. So in, uh, in Spring you have MVC like you have models, views and controllers, but here you actually have uh, only models and views. So it's an ongoing discussion whether it is uh, MVC or MVP or MVVP framework. So I'm not so much into that theoretical stuff. So I just, uh, I'll just say it's an MV star because it has only models and views. It's becoming hot. <laughs> okay, so about underscore, uh, it's been written by the same author. And uh, as backbone, it's really lightweight. As you see, 43 kilobytes uncompressed and uh, less than five kilos uh, when it's uh, minified and gzipped. 
So it's a utility library and it helps you do some common things uh, regarding uh, JavaScript objects, uh, arrays, collections, and uh, also it has its own included micro templating engine, which uh, uh, I'll show later on. So, uh, of course, you're not forced to use that templating engine. You can use any, uh, any other that you're used to, for example, Mustachi. But uh, if you don't have uh, too many, uh, I don't know, too, too difficult templates, then uh, this one is a kind of micro templating. So it's, but it's big enough. It was big enough for our project. Uh, does anyone have a, a napkin? Okay, here's a background JS structure and a kind of a type hierarchy. One would say it's a class diagram, but uh, in JavaScript, thank you. Uh, in JavaScript, you don't have classes. So it, uh, everything is around functions. Uh, and uh, you can watch them as uh, types in Backbone. So you have a root uh, type Backbone. It's a namespace uh, type. And uh, everything else is contained in, contain, uh, in that. And here are the modules. Events, model, collection, view, router, and history. Uh, so Backbone is a root namespace object is just uh, serves to, to contain all the others. And all the others are actually extending the events. What's the events? So uh, well, we can move to another slide. What are actually events? Uh, by extending backbone events, uh, any object in JavaScript uh, will uh, become aware of events. So you can trigger an event on that object, uh, any custom or uh, any event at all. And also that object uh, can start listening on, on uh, uh, events, whether on itself, like in the first case. So after I extended my object with events, I'm saying, okay, I want to listen on poke event. And uh, if poke event arises, then please execute this function. But also, I can have some other, uh, other object, which also uh, is of type which extends uh, events. I can, I can uh, tell, OK, listen on some other object and its events and, and react upon them. So it's, it's not much in this moment, but uh, Backbone is heavily relying on that. OK, now uh, let's move to some, something concrete. So models and collections. You can think of them uh, as in Java world, as some model is kind of a Pojo class. So when you extend a backbone model, you're actually creating a new type, which you can use later on in your application to uh, hold your data. Pretty simple, right? But not only that, so th this is a totally uh, short version. Uh, if you open the documentation of Backbone, you'll see that you can provide a uh, really big number of attributes to, the, to this extend method. So what I'm saying here is that uh, I want this model to have these fields, actually. And they have default values. So when I instantiate this uh, object of the type, new type, I can say, OK, uh, please. Uh, uh, set these fields uh, to, to some particular values, but the rest will have default values. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, as I said, there are a lot of function, the functions that you can supply uh, to, to uh, creation of the type. Uh, one of the most interesting is sync. So uh, that's, the, that's the function that Backbone.js expects you to overwrite, to implement, if you want, uh, want Backbone.js to synchronize your models with a server. So this is a JavaScript application. So everything is happening in the browser, and the application needs to persist some models to, uh, to the server. Uh, 
as I said, uh, all, all the modules in Backbone are extending events. So uh, transitively square, which I, uh, the type that I created here, uh, will transitively inherit from uh, events, so it's able to listen on events. Uh, that's good because you can, uh, when you're creating some view which have a model bind to it, you can uh, listen to model changes and react upon it. You can, for example, re-render the view which is bind to the, to the model. And of course, uh, fields in instantiated objects are held inside the, the the, the object itself, but, but you cannot uh, access it through the dot field notation. So uh, see that uh, I'm calling square dot set, and also, there's also a get method, that uh, get function uh, for getting uh, values. Okay, next our collection, as the uh, name suggests, that's just a collection of models. Some of some objects which are of the same type. So uh, it's useful when you have some views which are intended to resemble uh, some collection. So what you basically want to achieve is to, uh, for example, when you have some list view of some items, you would bind that view to uh, such a collection and observe when some, something changes, then you will probably re-render or something like that. And next are views. So that's, views are probably the most um, complicated thing and uh, uh, there are a lot of attributes that you can supply to uh, creating a new view type. And it's actually the central part of your application. So when you're creating a view, uh, that when you're coming into some view, uh, the first thing that, uh, that's being triggered is actually a view. So uh, if you're working with Spring, Java, you can think of a view as a, uh, so view in Backbone is like a controller plus the view in, in Spring, in classic MVC pattern. So what can you supply as uh, arguments to, when you're creating some views, so this is a new type of view. Um, well, you want to say to Backbone where, uh, where it is supposed to be rendered. So that's either going to be some existing DOM element, and you can supply that if you, if you supply uh, uh, parameter L, uh, which I didn't uh, hear. Uh, by supplying L, you're tell telling Backbone, okay, I already have some DOM element, and I, I want uh, this view to render in existing element. Uh, the alternative, is if you don't supply L, then Backbone will look for tag name, class name, also ID and uh, attributes. That's also one field in this object that can be supplied. And based on those four things, it will generate a DOM object and it will render to it. And uh, what's really important with views, as I said, uh, they in Backbone, they act as a controller in Spring and also uh, a view in Spring. So uh, in JavaScript or in single-page applications, uh, you actually don't uh, get the, those things from the server, so you don't have a controller. Everything is here is in, in view. So view is in charge of uh, uh, binding different events, so in handling those events uh, which uh, user interaction generates. So there's a events object saying, okay, I want this view to observe uh, these two events, mouse wheel and stop. Stop is actually a custom event from jQuery UI. It means uh, stop drag, so when you pick some element and drag it, and then when you release it, that's, that's a drag, uh, drag event, uh, stop event. And by supplying this kind of object, you're saying to Backbone, okay, I want these two type of events 
to be handled by functions with th these names. So I have, I listed those two functions, but uh, I omitted uh, implementations in, since uh, I didn't have enough space. But what's the point? What I wanted here to do is to, uh, when user comes to this view and uh, scrolls with the mouse, I want with the mouse scroll to update uh, the model which is tied to this view and to change its uh, axis. So, yeah. What's the square? If you remembered, uh, that's, a, that's a type which have a top, left, X, and color attributes. So, when I change the mouse wheel, I will uh, decrease or increase X, and uh, by calling a set on a square, and by saying that uh, this view should listen to changes on the model and then re-render it. After scrolling, I will, I will have uh, my uh, view autom automatically updated. I mean, it's not automatically, it's uh, because of this uh, binding. That's a little something on events. And uh, there are two really special functions, initialize and render. You can think of them as a initialize is kind of a constructor, so it's fired, it's executing only once when you uh, instantiate some view object. And in that moment, I mean, that's a good moment to initialize all the bindings on, on, uh, on your perhaps models or DOM elements. And render is called every, every time you need to repaint some view. And in the end, you can see how you can instantiate uh, a real object instance, instance of, of this type, square view. So note that when you're extending uh, anything in uh, any, any of Backbone's modules, uh, you're giving an object with parameters that, uh, which, which that type should have. But when you instantiate the type, you can supply this uh, object as well. So you don't have to actually define all these things in advance. You can, all, uh, you can uh, provide those attributes later on while, while creating actual view. So it's, as I said, uh, Backbone.js uh, doesn't really force you to do some things, any things in some particular ways. And for everything, you have multiple ways of achieving things. So. This is uh, one of those things. And next modules are router and history. I group them together uh, like model and collection because they have similar purpose. So uh, when you define a router in your application, you're actually saying to Backbone, okay, I want router to listen to changes of URL, and when that such change occurs, examine URL and see if, if it matches any of my patterns. So there's an empty string that's kind of home, and some uh, URLs like, like squares, so I want to render all the squares on that view, or square slash column ID. Column ID means uh, it can be anything, it's parameter. And uh, here you define all the routes for your application, or not all, you can have not just one application router, you can create uh, more than one. So what I'm saying, okay, if uh, you recognize any of these URLs, please call me uh, appropriate functions which are uh, listed as values of, the, of that object routes. And if you have some uh, parameter, like ID, you can expect that, that you will have that in, in a call to a handler function. Once you create uh, the router, extend backbones, you have to call it, to, uh, you have to create an instance of that type. And after that, backbone will handle all the changes of your URLs. And, uh, the other thing is history. So history is actually 
uh, backbones included module, you don't want to inherit it, but uh, it, because it handles, uh, how to say, history state of your application. So whenever URL changes, uh, backbone history is uh, remembering that and uh, it fixes back button and generally application state. Uh, kind of problem that uh, we are running into when we are developing an SPA, single page application. So these are, these are just the uh, basics of Backbone.js and uh, what this whole uh, presentation about is how we can write a single page application using Backbone. But why do we need single page applications? at all, that's the question. So, uh, yeah, classic approach was, okay, you have the server, generate the content, some HTML, even push it to the client. And uh, the problem with that was, whenever a user interacts with the page, presses something, uh, follows the link or something, then you, uh, that would cause a full page reload. And that was bad, okay? So we started using uh, JavaScript and Ajax to do some things in the background in the JavaScript to manipulate the DOM. And uh, that's all fine, but uh, if you have too many JavaScript things, then you will probably end up with some spaghetti code. That's, that's the problem. And uh, as we saw that uh, with JavaScript, you can just change the little bits of screen uh, we also wanted to have JavaScript uh, replace the whole view and uh, skip the, the, totally the part that you're, you're, you're going to uh, call the server and, uh, and reload the page totally. So by doing that, uh, we're making uh, our website more responsive. That's really good. But uh, with that approach, we are having uh, some problems. But I'll name the two. Uh, the one is, uh, as I said, you will probably have some spaghetti code. If you want to have in a JavaScript all the views that your application has, and uh, you're putting that uh, in one file or possibly in several files, but it's, uh, uh, it's a problem how you're going to structure that. So Backbone.js is offering a fine way uh, to, to structure that code by using views, as I've shown you. So if you uh, embrace that way of using views and models and collections, uh, you can structure your JS applications really nice, nicely. Of course, you can uh, include Backbone JS in your applications and uh, not use, you don't have to use all of those uh, modules. You can use just a few of them, what, what suits you. But uh, yeah, we tried it and it's, we think it's good. And yeah, the other problem is with uh, when you, uh, if you just replace all the content of the web page and uh, by that simulating navigation through the website, you would have a broken back button and you couldn't, your users would not be able to bookmark the web page, or if they reload the page, they will go back to the, the beginning, right? So that's a known issue and all issue. Uh, and the backbone, with, with its history and the uh, router module, fixes all that for you for free. So, yeah. That's the time. Okay. So now I want to show you an example, uh, how can you structure your JavaScript single page application using Backbone? So uh, single page application means once the user access your website, uh, regardless of the URL, it will get one, one HTML. Or to be more precise, uh, whichever URL it access, uh, it will get the same HTML. That HTML might include some JavaScript and styles, of course, but JavaScript should be uh, actually in charge of handling 
of uh, investigating which URL is that, which view should I show to the user. <coughs> and uh, yeah, as I show you, as I shown you with the uh, router component of Backbone, you can easily do that. So this is how your HTML file uh, might look like when using Backbone. So as I said, you need to have some DOM man uh, manipulation library like jQuery, and uh, you need to include underscore, of course, Backbone. Uh, note that there is no content in this page, only one div which has some, in this example, it has an ID app, and uh, my intention is to use that uh, that div to render all the content, you know, all the, all the views will be rendered in that div. Also, uh, HTML, which should be uh, rendered on various screen, uh, it is good practice to have them stored in uh, templates. So it's kind of template. I'm not sure if any of you use the Mustachi or some other templating engine in JavaScript. So uh, it's those kind of templates. You can think of them uh, in, like in Java world, you have tiles. So tiles is, is also composing a view from different bits of uh, views. So you can either create some standard view or some uh, little parts and assemble them together. And that's exactly uh, what I want to show you, but just by using Backbone. Uh, yeah, as I said, most applications, or maybe not most, but yeah, in our case, we are building an application which ended up with uh, uh, more than 50 views. And all of them should have uh, exact same header and footer and uh, some common functionalities. And for that, because we don't want to write those code all, all over again and you know, we want to keep it maintainable, uh, we needed to think of a way to create some kind of standard view. And uh, here's a way how you can do that. So uh, when I show you the, 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 the way you can create views by extending Backbone view, that was just uh, uh, the intention of that view is to, was to render some small piece of the, the view. But this one, uh, its intention is to render the whole view, so the whole screen. And uh, if you remember, we had that div with ID app. And I'm saying, OK, the standard view should, should render in app, that's the, the L attribute. And I'm, say, I'm saying, OK, uh, I want to use, well, I have an attribute, standard template, which is underscore dot template. What's that? That's uh, used from, thanks. Uh, that's used from underscore dot JS. So with that, uh, by using that notation, you're actually creating a function, standard template, by compiling everything which is inside that standard template. And that's actually this one. So this will be kind of a skeleton of our standard view. And uh, OK, we can observe what's happening. In initialize, I just want to. So in this example, I want to have a header and sidebar, which, are, which will be the same for all the pages. And uh, in constructor, initialize function, I'm creating those, uh, those views. And in the render, so every time this view needs to be shown, actually, the render will be called. Uh, what I'm doing is <clears throat> setting the element of this view, L. Dollar $L is actually a wrapper. So L, in L, you will always have a DOM object. And in $L, you'll have a jQuery wrapper around DOM object. <coughs> so uh, what I'm saying, OK, in L, put, put the content of my standard template. Now, 
templates are intended to receive some parameters. Uh, this standard template doesn't have it, but you'll see it uh, afterwards. And uh, what I'm doing next is, um, okay, uh, our sidebar and header should know uh, where to render their content, content. So I'm setting that, that and rendering, calling a render method. And in the end, in this standard view, I am calling some render content new <coughs> function, which is not something that Backbone is uh, providing. And as you see, uh, I provided some default implementation of render content. That's nothing. But uh, as you probably guess, we'll use that afterwards. When we uh, start inheriting the standard view, every other view will uh, actually implement its own render content. Can I have the another one? Thanks. Okay, so let's see uh, how sidebar and header implementation look like. So sidebar is also, of course, server view is extending uh, backbone view. And uh, like I said, standard view is something that will be rendered on the whole screen, but sidebar view is just a kind of tile. But uh, it has its own behavior, so I'm uh, saying, okay, it should have some events and they should be handled inside this view. So this code will be common for all the views which extend, uh, which extend uh, uh, standard view because standard view uses sidebar view. Okay, we don't have anything new here, except that you can see the template is just an uh, unordered list. So you, you will be able to click on squares and circles. Uh, yeah, and here's the implementation of header view. It's really uh, small, but here you can see how you can take advantage of templating uh, of underscore. So, uh, here we also have some template and once we uh, actually call the, the compile template, here we are supplying some arguments, title, and that will be rendered here. Why is that good? Because uh, that way you can keep your HTML separated from <coughs> JavaScript. So, uh, you can have your designer or the guy or girl uh, working on HTMLs. He, he or she doesn't have to know about JavaScript or something. You just put the placeholders where uh, appropriate information should uh, be, and that's all. So from JavaScript, you will set you will set uh, those values. Uh, on all the slides, I put the the actual HTML underneath the. JavaScript implementation, but in actual application, that HTML will be either in uh, index.html or you will have them separated across multiple HTML files, uh, especially if your project uh, grows too much. So as I said, our project has around 50, more than 50 views, and we are having all the HTML templates separated in uh, separate files. And finally, how can you use the standard view so you can uh, extend from them, inherit from them, uh, like we did uh, uh, any other extending from Backbone's modules, types. And what I need to do is to say, okay, uh, for this particular view, home view, which extends uh, standard view, uh, I just need to say, okay, this is my template, and I need to redefine that function, render content. Remember that one. And that's basically it. But of course, this is a simple one, so it doesn't have any events, but uh, you, could, you could put uh, event parameter and uh, of course some, some more content and it will work just like that. So, 
uh, our project looks something like this. So we split all the views across multiple files. That's this. And we split all the HTML files in separate. Uh, HTML templates into separate files. It's a lot of files and uh, of course there's some uh, JavaScript which are not uh, neither views or models, uh, some utility stuff and also libraries. And also we are having uh, style files, not for every view but for some of them which are maybe bigger, bigger views. So you might ask yourself Okay, how do we ship that code to the client? I mean, it's not good to, to include separately all those files into index.html because, uh, especially because it's intended for mobile platforms. There, there are some uh, devices, or not devices, but browsers which do not support loading more than two or four uh, resources per domain. So if I put all those files into as inclusions in index.html, then loading of that, that page will take forever. So that's, that would be really bad. But on the other hand, it, it's good to have them separated because that way you can have a team working on that. They'll, they'll, you won't have conflicts, of course. It will be more maintainable. So the solution for this, there are more solutions. So uh, in the beginning, we tried with require.js. I don't know if anyone, any one of you tried that. So that's uh, AMD library, which uh, serves as a, a utility for dynamic loading of, of external resources to, to uh, some HTML uh, page. But uh, after some time <clears throat> and testing on some really old devices, and with Android 2.2, we saw that uh, it's uh, really getting the website slow, so we throw that out, and we had to find some other way how to assemble that, uh, those files, and uh, we ended up using Maven for aggregating and minifying, but uh, I think more about that uh, you can hear on the next session, which will be held uh, in this room. And uh, you can note that all these files are actually CSS, JS, HTML, no JSP, no ASP. So all the files are static. You know, you're not, you're not rendering here anything on the server. These files will be served the same uh, regardless of the parameters which are sent from the client. So uh, that's really good because uh, you can package all those files and they will always be the same on the client. And uh, what client needs, I mean, uh, all the interactions will be done through some RESTful web services. Uh, that's also part of, of our application, but uh, yeah, we don't have time to show that. But regarding uh, packaging, I think you should stay in the next session and fi find out more. Yeah. Skip this slide. I mean, I already was talking about that. So I think that's all. That's all.